Welcome to Electron Online, and now it's, we're going to take a look at the binomial distribution. So the binomial distribution is a little bit different from the normal distribution, although there's a lot of connections between the two, and we'll explore those in a little bit. But now let's just take a look at what a binomial distribution is. What in the world is a binomial distribution? Well, it turns out it is a distribution of the results of a binomial experiment and they consist of the following things. So let's say we do what we call a binomial experiment. What are the, uh, the criteria of a binomial experiment? Well, first of all, there are n identical experiments or trials. So you're going to do the trial over and over and over again. And especially since we call it a binomial experiment, each trial could only have two possible outcomes. Kind of like flipping a coin. It can be heads or tails. Or if you toss a die, it can either be odd or even or something like that. So there's only two possible outcomes and because of that two means by that's why we call it a binomial experiment so we do the same thing over and over and over again like you toss a, co a coin over and over and over again in each case there can only be a heads or tails there only can be two outcomes the probability for each outcome does not change from one trial to the next so every time we flip a coin there's a 50% chance it's heads and a 50% chance it's tails. And that probability for heads or tails does not change. And finally, all trials must be independent. They are independent. What that means is when I flip a coin once, then I flip a coin again, the outcome of the second flip in no way depends upon the outcome of the first flip. They're completely independent. And that's what we mean by a binomial distribution. So there are n identical experiments, n could be a small number, two or three, or could be a big number like a thousand or a million, and we'll get into the differences between those. Each trial only has two outcomes. The probability for each outcome does not change through from trial to trial, stays the same, and all trials are supposed to be independent. I'll show you an example of flipping a coin. Another thing we need to know is that we then use the variable p as the probability of success. So when you flip a coin, you want to have heads. Heads would be success. And then q is the probability of failure. So tails would be failure, heads would be success. And the probability of the two combined always must add up to one. They don't have to be equal. Now in this case, with a coin, they are indeed equal, but it doesn't have to be. They can be different. The probability of one could be 0.9, the other one could be 0.1. As long as they stay the same and they add up to one, we're okay. So, let's toss a coin five times. <clears throat> toss a coin five times. So there's five trials, and in each case, the probability of success, let's say uh, success would be heads, and therefore the probability of success is equal to 0 0.5, because there's a 50-50 chance you'll get heads, and the probability of failure also 0 0.5 because the probability you get tails is also 50%. All right, now, if we're tossing a coin five times, what does a normal distribution look like? A normal distribution for success, meaning heads. So since it's a binomial distribution, we can use the binomial expansion to figure out the numbers. So of course, if you toss five times, so therefore the possible outcomes is that it's either that we either have uh, one head or we're looking for heads right yes except so we either have zero heads one head two heads three heads four heads and five heads so there's a total of 32 combinations which in other words two to the fifth power 32 combinations when you toss a coin five times so what does that binomial expansion or binomial distribution look like? Well, first of all, let's get the coefficients correct. So we have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. And the way we do that is we add those two numbers together, we get 2. So here we have 1 and 1. Add 1 and 2 together, you get 3. Add 2 and 1 together, you get 3. Then again, you do it 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 1 is 4. And 1. And finally, you get 1. 1 plus 4 is 5, 4, 4 plus 6 is 10, 6 plus 4 is 10, 4 plus 1 is 5, and 1. If you add all these numbers together, you can see they add up to 32. Which means, out of 32 possible combinations, 1 out of 32, so you have 1 out of 32, you're going to have 0 heads. 5 out of 32, you're going to have 1 head. 10 out of 32, you're going to have two heads. 
10 out of 32, you're going to have three heads. 5 out of 32, you're going to have four heads. And 1 out of 32, you're going to have five heads. So the distribution for a binomial experiment like this, what we call a binomial distribution, would look something like this. So the probability of success versus the quantity right here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, and I'm missing 0, am I not? That's right. Because it could be zero. I need to include the number zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So for zero, there's a possibility of one out of 32. So that's one out of 32. For one head, that's five out of 32. So it's about like this. So that's five out of 32. For two heads, that's 10 out of 32. <clears throat> So 10 divided by 32. For three heads, it's also 10 out of 32. Four heads, it is five out of 32. And finally, five heads is only one out of 32. So there's what we would call a binomial distribution for tossing the coin five times. And notice that if you add up the area of each one of them, add them all up, you get a total of one because the total area underneath the curve, so to speak, should still equal one or the total number of values possible is equal to 1 when you add them all up. And so that's what we call a binomial distribution for tossing a coin five times. And that's how we do that.